Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper. Glad to be with you for this week's edition of Takedown. The World Championships are underway. Pat Smith, Mason Manville, Ben Provisor, and Giangelo Hancock all took the mat Monday in Paris. The U.S. Greco team got off to a good start as Manville scored a pair of passivity points on his way to a 4-2 decision against Sweden's Ensberg. Round two, Manville met up with Georgia's Salakadze. The Penn State sophomore scored the only technical points of the bout on a body lock, but gave up three passivity points in the process. Now trailing 3-2, Manville took the Georgians back, but came up just inches and seconds short of the win. Salakadze was pinned in the quarterfinals, bouncing Manville from the bracket. All right, Mason, uh, first world championships for you. Yep. I mean, you came out, got a win, and then you had the tough match there in the, the second round. But just talk about how you wrestled, how you felt at that day. Um, I felt pretty good. Uh, I felt like I was moving really well, and I was, you know, pushing the pace, trying to attack, trying to do my offensive, you know, ties. But, you know, some controversy with, with the ref, but, you know, you can't control any, control any of that. I thought I took him down twice, but ref didn't. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm just trying to you know, get better. So. Pat Smith also reached the round of 16 in his World Championships debut. He scored early on a step out and tacked on a takedown and passivity point to defeat Matus Morbitzer of the Czech Republic. The former Minnesota Gopher faced Asian bronze medalist Azangulov in the quarters and scored the first two points on a step out and passivity. Azangulov would open up his arsenal in the second, hitting a pair of four point throws to take the bout 8 2. Like Manville, Smith was eliminated after his opponent failed to reach the finals. All right, Pat, uh, talk about your day a little bit. You came out good, got a win under your belt, and then, uh, you know, tough second match there. You, you were still looking good throughout the match. You know, how did you feel your wrestle the day? My body felt good. Um, felt prepared, felt ready to go. Um, I think just like reflecting back a little bit, the first thing that comes to mind is the second match was definitely winnable and I think that's the most frustrating thing when small lapses in discipline or position can kind of change the whole course of the match and, and so that's why it's probably tough for me is that you know I know what I'm capable of um, and uh, didn't, didn't quite come out um, in that second match. The encouraging thing is I guess is I can I feel like I can wrestle with any of these guys um, in the world um, but feel, feeling like it and actually doing it uh, are two different things. So we're, we still we got to go back and go back to work. Two-time Olympian Ben Provisor dropped a heartbreaker in the opening round at 85 and was eliminated after just one bout. Trailing 2-1, Provisor powered through a second period pushout to take the lead on criteria, but the Ukrainian answered with a four-point throw at the buzzer and took the match 6-2. All right, Ben. I mean, talk about your day. Talk about your match a little bit. Not what you wanted. Disappointing finish for you, but talk about it. Well, you know, I was up 2-2 two -two with that 16 seconds left, and I, uh, with that headbutt that happened, I sort of got a little upset. Same thing that happened at the Olympics. I let my uh, emotions get the best of me. I feel like I need to practice that a little bit more. Um, and I came forward when I was already winning. Should have just circle to my circle back with my left foot forward and then you know, he scored on my good side and my left side's my like tricky side so I shouldn't have shouldn't have been able to give that point up but you know I live and learn you know it's my first world championships and now you know probably gonna go move to Penn State with Mason and move on from there so we'll see. 20-year-old Greco sensation G. Angelo Hancock scored on a step out and two passivity points to top Turkey's Boskoy in the opening round at 98. Waiting in the quarterfinals was 2016 Olympic champ Arthur Alexan. The Armenian held a three-point lead at the break. Hancock, however, would pull within two on a passivity call, but a four-point throw, a failed challenge attempt, and a takedown gave Alexan Yan the 10-1 tech. Hancock was drawn back into the repejage where he fell to Asian world champ Saladze. The Iranian scored on a pair of past 70 points and a step out to take the match 3 1. All right, Angelo, uh, and talk about your day a little bit. You got three matches in. You wrestled some of the best guys in the world today. Um, talk about your experience a little bit. Uh, it was a rough day, you know, had a rough month. But uh, like I say, I'm grateful for this opportunity. I'm sitting here wrestling Olympic world champ, multiple world champ, multiple Olympic time, Olympic medalist. and. Uh, I'm grateful to get that experience. You know, I'm sitting here, I train, I give my life to this, you know, I train my whole year for this, and 
wrestling's like this, you know, any day something crazy can happen. And uh, as you can see, it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. I'm, I'm still devoted to give another year to it because this definitely gave me an estimate of what I'm looking forward to now. I'm, I'm not far. What's the biggest takeaway for you for where you need to improve to get to that uh, level you want to be at? You know, I think I have the mentality down because I, I, I just don't care who I have to wrestle. I'm going to go out there and give my all. But uh, it's, it's aggravating because the, the, the slightest things, you know, it's the small things that, that win these matches. You know, we're taught to, we're taught to wrestle to, to let it all out, to, to have scores, big points, big throws. And uh, these guys are taught a little bit different. They're taught how to win matches by one point. And uh, I think i got to be able to have that little that mental switch to know when I have to shut down, when I need to stop pursuing, and when I need to start taking a tactical edge, you know. Up next, Robbie Smith and his beard tries to turn things around for Team USA on day two of the World Championships. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Casey's General Stores, famous for pizza. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to yellow blue LED lighting, and you should too. All right, welcome back. Our recap of the 2017 World Championships continues with the final four members of the U.S. Greco team. Ellis Coleman was dominant in the opening round at 66. He controlled the action, earning two takedowns and four step-outs on his way to a first-period tech over his Brazilian opponent. In controversial quarters, however, against Slovakia, officials penalized Coleman two points for using a stiff arm to his opponent's neck during an act of pummel. From then on, neither wrestler scored a technical point. Both were called for passivity and Coleman was eliminated after just two bouts. It's been a few years since you've been on this stage. Just, uh, you know, your approach coming in, was it uh, different from a couple years past? Was it like to be back on the big big stage again? Um, nah, same approach. Uh, it was, I mean, the same as before, you know, nothing changed. Nothing has changed besides the, the rules, you know. And uh, But, I mean, I, I've, I've wrestled with these rules. I've made this team, so... I've adapted to him, but you know, just being able to adapt internationally to each person that you that you face and um, come with a game plan, or just being able to be flexible and being able to change the game plan up uh, when you um, when you come out here, because you know, guys might game plan against you, and guys might come out with something that you're not used to or what you think that they were, that they normally do, they don't, they wouldn't do at this competition, and so uh, just being flexible, you know, and uh, being able to figure that out. Competing in his fifth straight Worlds, heavyweight Robbie Smith opened the tournament by throwing and pinning Slovakia's Suze a minute 54 into the first. Leading 2-0 on a passivity call, Smith secured a body lock and tossed Suze for four points and finished with the fall. In the second round, he faced veteran Yasmani Acosta Fernandez of Chile. Acosta scored a step out and a point for passivity in the first and forced Smith out of bounds in the second to go up 3-0. Costa was eventually penalized for passivity, but Smith was unable to put together any offense and dropped the 3-1 decision. All right, Robbie, um, talk about your day, man. You, you won a match, lost a tough one. Um, you know, how do you feel out there? Um, and I, I mean, I felt great uh, leading up to this whole tournament. Um, it is, I'm tired of doing this, you know. <laughs> I, I'd rather be asked and talked to after I win a medal, but, uh, you know, it's not fun doing this right now, honestly. Uh, so, I mean, I got to change some stuff, uh, got to get stronger. I mean, 
the guy, he's from Cuba, who beat me. Mm -hmm. He says Chile, but he's from Cuba. Uh, he was a number two until he defected. And, um, you know, it's, it is what it is, and I lost. He, he played the game right, and uh, he, he got the calls. So, you know, it, it's, it's hard, uh, it's rough, but, you know, it, Greco had a rough tournament. Uh, it just didn't seem like anything would go our way. Um, you know, but our, my team wrestled hard. Everybody wrestled hard. Everybody wrestled, kept their heads up. You know, it, it's 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 just a hard, it's a blow. It's a it's a it's a it's a hard blow right now. Um, you know, we got to get back to, I guess, the drawing board and figure something out, uh, change it up. I mean, I I came into this place feeling great. You know, feeling like I had the world in front of me and uh, I can I can I was ready to dominate. But um, you know, first match went out there, wrestled wrestled well. And uh, it was it was fine, and got the win. Came off that, was going out second match, feeling really great, you know, feeling awesome. And then he controlled the tie and the wrist, the underhook and the wrist, and I, I mean, couldn't get away from it. And that's it. That's basically all that happened uh, in that match. And then I tried picking it up late towards the end. I thought I almost had that duck under, but uh, you know, he just I couldn't get my head up all the way. So here's what it is. Veteran Cheney Haight lost by pin to 2017 World Bronze medalist Zabo of Hungary in his first bout at 80. Haight hit a two-point throw early in his opening match against the World Bronze medalist, but the Hungarian responded with two takedowns and a pin. You know, obviously it didn't really go according to plan, but that's just life. You know, I, I felt like I prepared as hard as I could for it. I had a great camp, but I don't know, It's it's been... I was giving up some underhooks in that match, and it's, it's been a problem with me, I think. And I've worked on it a lot. He just happened to come through, and, and he was still like able to get it. I, was, I, I knew how he wrestled. I wanted to get my points out early, just so I could kind of, just because I knew like if he scored first, it was going to be hard to break through him, just because he's Boy. Boy. He's just kind of a grinder and he's pretty strong, so it's kind of hard to like force some points on him. So I wanted to get him while he was like coming at me. But once he got like ahead of me, like it was kind of hard coming back. America's last chance for a medal was at 59 kilos. That's where Ildar Hafizov faced Armenian Kacharan. Now the Armenian scored first on a four point move, but Hafizov responded with a takedown to pull within two. Afazov was penalized late in the first for choking with a front headlock, but continued to press the action and close the gap on a passivity call in the second. Leading 6-3, the Armenian locked up a late takedown and took the match 8-3. Talk, talk to me about your day a little bit, Eldar. Um, you know, how you feel you performed, you got the one match in, but uh, you know, what do you think about your performance? So I didn't perform well today. <laughs> I want to apologize to my coaches because I didn't meet their expectation today. Came up short. I don't know what's happened. I don't know what was wrong. Um, we we did all the way through like camp and stuff, competitions. I don't know it's worst competition this year. Like worst is I didn't wrestle for. I don't know. The other competition was very success, but this one like. I, I don't know. I just I can't say any good words for my side right now. Well, the U.S. Greco team finished with five wins and nine losses on the tournament, while just one athlete was able to reach the repertoire's rounds. Team USA will look to turn things around on Tuesday as the first four American women take the mat in Paris. Remember, you can catch all six days of action live at trackwrestling.com. Very affordable broadcast, by the way. Quick timeout. Back after this, you're watching Takedown. Thanks to Defense Soul. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one.
What's up guys, I wanna tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin, stay pure, stay clean, checking them out, pureandcleansports.com. Well, it's been more than two decades since the U.S. won a freestyle world team title, but many believe that the streak will end in France. Here to break down the loaded U.S. lineup is our own Tony Hager. Thanks, Scott. We're going to break this down weight by weight, starting at 57 kilograms, where first-time world team member Thomas Gilman will represent the United States. Gilman owns a solid international experience having been part of two junior world teams and one cadet world team. He won a bronze medal back in 2014 on the junior team. Gilman recently won gold at the Grand Prix in Spain. While you know he hasn't wrestled a lot of these guys, it's been a while. He's stu studied tons of film on him. He, has, he, he knows their tendencies, so I think he'll have a deep knowledge of what it's going to take to come back here. I think he is a dark horse to medal at 57, gram, 57 kilograms, but he's going to be a, a guy that's going to need a really – good spot in the bracket. Going up to 61 kilograms, the United States enters reigning world champion Logan Stieber. Currently ranked third in the world and is coming off a gold medal at the Grand Prix. He's got bronze at the Pan Ams. He's also He also wrestled in the World Cup, so he went three and one. So a little bit of a lapse there where he did take a take a loss to a couple of top, top ten guys, but he is the favorite here to go into the World Championships. Anything less than a, a medal here I think would be a disappointment for Logan Stieber. Georgia will bring, be bringing a big favorite here too. He's bumping up. Uh, Olympic gold medalist in 2016, the world champ. So uh, there's definitely going to be firepower at 61 kilograms, but I look for Logan Steber to pick up a medal. At 65 kilograms, the U.S. is represented by Zane Rutherford. Penn State's pumped up about this guy. Arguably the most dominant wrestler we've seen in college wrestling for the last decade. Two-time NCAA champ, Hodge Trophy winner. This will be his first World Championships, though. So this is, uh, you know, he's he is well versed in freestyle wrestling, but this is a big stage. It's a brand new stage. He was at the Cadet World Team back in 2012, and uh, after defeating Olympian Frank Molinaro, I think. Uh, that merely gave Americans hope. I mean, beating him in the best of three, he's able to come up, step on a mat like this. He's similar to Gilman. We don't have a ton of recent results against foreign wrestlers. So Georgia, they'll be a favorite here going along with Russia, Poland, Puerto Rico's Frank Gomez. Those are, those are the guys you need to look out for. So Zane Rutherford, tall task uh, ahead for him. Up at 70 kilograms, the U.S. enters Red Hot James Green. He's the highest ranked wrestler in the field. He's won three international gold medals this year. Two-time Asian champ Hoshi Kani of Iran is the only man to beat Green this year, and that was at the World Cup. While Green will be the top seed, we can't forget Frank Chimizo of Italy making his move up a weight class. Olympic bronze medalist, world champ at 65 kilograms. Chimizo can score points from offense and defense, and that's really what makes him really the most dangerous guy in this field. So you need to keep a, you keep a lead on him at any point in this match. You have to keep that lead because he can score in bunches. I think that he's the favorite ahead of Russia and the United States. Green will be in a solid position to bring home a gold medal again. Where Chimizo falls in the bracket, that will be crucial to the U.S. success here. I've got a lot more for you after the break. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Nike Wrestling. Stay tuned. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built.
Welcome back to take down our preview of the Freestyle World Championships continues at 74 kilograms and can an already legend in our sport continue to write history? That's the question at 74 kilograms. Jordan Burroughs continues his quest to be one of the best of all time in wrestling, not just in the United States, in all of wrestling. After not meddling at the Rio Games, which, mind you, was his first international tournament not to medal in, many questioned his future. I did, of course. But Burroughs returned to the mat at the World Cup going 4-0. Burroughs lost for the first time to an American at the World Team Trials and came back. Came back to win two strong matches. Now the champ is back, right? Everyone saw him going down to date, coming back to beat that. I think there's no question that his abilities are still here. He's a grandpa on this team, making his seventh world straight team, so that gives him a wealth of knowledge and experience. But staining his path, though, will be Russia Sabalov, who has won every world freestyle championship he's ever entered, every single one of them. 2014 world champ is in the field from Turkey as well. So this is a tough field, no doubt. Jordan Burroughs. Wrestling like he did at the at the World Team Trials, he's going to be the favorite. All eyes are going to be on Jordan Burroughs from the United States. One big question mark for the Americans is the representative at 86 kilograms, Jaden Cox. He's making his return to international competition after winning bronze at the Rio Games. Cox, as many know, he won his third NCAA title in March. His focus has been primarily in folk style wrestling. So many have been questioning along this way is, does he, does he have what it takes to come back to the international scene? He had a slight injury after defeating David Taylor at the World Team Trials. For me, though, I'm not questioning him. He didn't have a lot of experience going to international wrestling before the Olympic team trials and then really no experience going into the Olympics. So for him to bring home a medal at that leaves no doubt in my mind. The real biggest question will be how is that injury? Iran, Azerbaijan, Russia will be no doubt the favorite at 86 kilograms, but don't count out Jaden Cox with his amazing defense. The only thing that you really should question, like I mentioned, is whether or not he's going to be 100% on the mat. All right, now time for the most anticipated matchups of the World Championships. United States Kyle Snyder and Russia Sadulayev. Both won Olympic golds in Rio, but Sadulayev's came at 86 kilograms. Snyder has been known to take out Goliath's before, though. His first world title was over world champ Gadisov of Russia and won Olympic gold over eight-time world and Olympic medalist Gusev of Azerbaijan. If Snyder can beat Sadulayev, he will be nipping on the heels of Jordan Burroughs' legacy at a young age of 21 with plenty more to go, and I think he gets it done. The U.S. will have a fresh face at 125 kilograms, Nick Gwizdowski. Gwiz is top 20 in the world at this weight class. After knocking off Pan Am champ Don Bradley in the U.S. World Team Trials, Gwiz also picked up a gold medal at the Grand Prix in Spain early this year, so he got a little experience overseas. This will be a very, very difficult weight class for the U.S. to bring home a medal. Turkey's at Ghoul is looking to become the first freestyle wrestler at 125 kilograms to win four world level titles in a row since 1978. So Olympic gold medalists will also be pushed by Georgia and Ukraine. Prediction for the world medals guys in, in men's freestyle is five medals for me. Look for the Americans to be in the hunt for the team title. Newcomers like Gilman, Rutherford, and Gwizdowski will be crucial to our team points. So with that in mind, back to you Scott. All right. Thanks, Tony. For more wrestling news, interviews, weekly prizes, and the longest running radio show in the sport, it's all absolutely free. Check it out at TakedownWrestle.com. Also, a reminder, you can watch every match from the 2017 World Championships live and on demand at TrackWrestling.com. From our studios in Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.